Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Gabe with the Fan TV, man. Back at you another video. Let the content in this video go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel. Go ahead and subscribe. You know, Ravens content is still coming at you on a daily basis, man. That's not going to change, win, lose, or draw. And uh, today, you know, we're going to talk about what have we learned so far from the Ravens season. Uh, the first quarter of the season is over. I like to look at it as, um, you know, you get four, 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 and obviously we're 17 games now, five. So, the first four games, that first quarter of the season is, is in the past. The Ravens are 2-2. Two two. What have you learned? What can we take away? What can we uh, extrapolate about the season moving forward, right? Um, also, but before we get to that, I do want to say that, you know, Jimmy Smith did retire today. So, shout out to Jimmy Smith. Um, you know, injuries kind of robbed him of what we could see was his full greatness as a Baltimore Raven. But when he was out there, it was undoubtedly he was one of the best corners in the NFL. And he's one of the best cornerbacks in Ravens history, you know. So, uh, shout out to him, you know. Um, 11 years is a long time, great career, and you know, he decided to hang him up. Um, I listen to the Pivot podcast a lot, and Fred Taylor has a saying about NFL players. He says that, uh, you know, these, these guys, we don't retire, we just have a career change. So, shout out to Jimmy Smith and his career change now, and um, I'm looking forward to see what he does next, all right? So, I just wanted to say that. Okay, now, what did we learn about this Ravens team uh, in this first four weeks of the season? Going into the second quarter of the, of the season, what did we learn? Okay, now firstly, I'm going to say that um, this team is probably still too dependent on the analytics of the game, right? Uh, I saw a tweet, I think it was, uh, his name is like Skeptical on Twitter, you know, he's, he's, he's a really knowledgeable Ravens fan. He was saying that, you know, the first three quarters of football, you know, that's, you know, use analytics, whatever. A fourth quarter, let's, let's use some football knowledge out here, Okay. Uh, because at the end of the day, if, if every decision we made is based on analytics as a coach, are you replaceable now on the sideline? Where does your knowledge come into the game? Everything we're doing is based on what the math guys upstairs tell us. Are the math guys, are they, are they the head coach of this team? Do they make the decisions? Are, are, is that the person we should say is the new head coach, is the uh, the, the senior analytics uh, analyst? Is that the new head coach? So I think that, you know, the Ravens, they go forward and forth down a lot. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But um, in that game, when you look at the game situation right there, the Ravens drive all the way down the field, long drive, get no points. That's one thing. Second thing, they don't score any points in the second half. That that three points that Tucker would have put on the board would have been the first points of the second half. Take your three points, you know what I'm saying? Third, the defense was playing well. All right, now you can say the Buffalo drove down the field on the end of the game, but that's a completely different scenario at that point in time, Okay. Um, but I get it. You know, you're on the two yard line, things like that. You know, you think you're thinking that at worst case scenario, we, we make Buffalo drive 98 yards. I get all of that. But at the end of the day, um, analytics seems to always say go for it. So how much of it is really analytics? Okay. Um, so I want to get off of that. Um, next thing is about the offense. Uh, Lamar Jackson is still playing at a high, high level. Um, he did he have his best game versus Buffalo? No, he didn't. But you know, he was named the player of the month in uh, September, excuse me. So, obviously, he was doing something correctly. He's still that guy. He's still um, the leader of this team. He's still a top three quarterback, in my opinion, or top five, if you want to say that, whatever. Um, so, he's still that guy. Um, I, I feel as though J.K. Dobbins looks really, really good to start the year. I'm excited for what I'm seeing from J.K. Dobbins. It's only been two weeks. But already, he looks like the best running back on the Ravens, which, which he should be. Because that's what he is. He looks way more explosive, things like that. I think PFF had J.K. Dobbins graded out as the highest Ravens player in that game, um, which he should have been. Honestly, the Ravens didn't use J.K. Dobbins enough. I believe he was only on the field for 50% of the snaps, which is criminal considering how well he was playing. And I get it. You're trying to ease him back into the game. I know. Rainy, um, tough surface, whatever. But the Ravens needed J.K. Dobbins in that game. They needed more of J.K. Dobbins. Um, and I just feel like 50% of the snaps, it just wasn't enough for him out there, okay? Um, this wide receiver group is inconsistent, to say the least. But they have made plays when given the opportunity as far as DuVernay and Bateman. Rashad Bateman has been up and down this year. He hasn't been consistent at all, one game to the next. Um, and the drops are an issue. Uh, I was talking with somebody in the comments. Uh, talking about Rashad Bateman's drops, to me, it appears to be concentration drops. He has good hands. I've seen him snag the ball. That's not really an issue to me. When I watched him play against the uh, the play versus the Dolphins, the, the you know the long slant for a touchdown, 
That's a full extension snag of the ball. And then, you know, you want 75 yards with it. So hands to me isn't his issue. What I see with him is he's thinking about the next move before he catches the ball. Or he just he's just not fully completing the catch and not looking the ball into his hands. A lot of times these, these drops happen when there are players around him. And he's looking to say, okay, where am I about to go next with, with my next move? And that is an issue that he needs to correct. He needs to figure out. Um, John Harbaugh talked about Rashad Bateman today. Said he has like a mid foot injury. Doesn't expect it to be too serious. I don't know if that's going to hold him out of any games. Um, we shall see. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, this receiver position still is not given an opportunity to play. I think James Foshe played two snaps on uh, Sunday versus the Bills. And I'm not saying he's going to change the game or anything like that. But what I'm saying is the Ravens cannot keep having these guys on the roster and not playing them, bro. And it's not because of competition or they don't think these guys can get open. Whatever the case and excuse you're trying to make, it's simply the fact of this is Greg Roman's offense and he decides he prefers to run it. Simple as that. And speaking of Greg Roman, okay, he has been, I, I think he's been okay this year. I think he's been fine. I don't like the fact that he called a fullback screen for Pat Ricard. I don't care if it got seven yards. It doesn't need to be called. Um... But he's been all right. It hasn't been anything as far as to complain about and say that he should be fired or nothing like that. I do wish that we see Lamar Jackson on the field with three wide receivers more often. I, honestly, the three tight end thing is cool to a certain extent when you need to control the clock, run the ball. All right, cool. But when we have obvious passing situations, let's get Tylen Wallace out there. Let's let's get James Prochet out there. Let's get them all out there with Devin Duvernay and, and, and Rashad Bateman. Let's get some more speed and athleticism on the field. Simple as that. So if I had to give Greg Roman a grade for this first quarter of the season so far, I I, I think it's a I think it's a BB plus. You know, I think the Bills game kind of exposed the fact that and people could say, oh, these receivers, they just don't get open. And I, I've seen teams with similar talent to the Ravens at receiver. Scheme guys open. It's just a simple fact. The Ravens don't. When's the last time a Ravens receiver has really been, wow, that guy is wide open down the field? Now, the play I can think of is obviously Rashad Bateman versus the um, versus the Jets, um, you know, week one. But I'm saying just like a, if it's not a bomb play, just a regular, dang, this guy's one of the across the field wide open. I think James Boucher had a play like that last year versus the Broncos, if I'm not mistaken. But it doesn't happen too often in this office where a guy is just open. It's not... This offense doesn't create easy throws for the wide receivers or for the quarterback Lamar Jackson himself, and that's an issue. Okay, um, but offense, Greg Roman, I would have to give him a, probably a B plus so far for how he's calling the games this season. I mean, he's been he's been all right. I can't really complain about. It. So defense, what have you learned about the defense so far? Uh, we learned that the pass rush has been disappointing. Okay, we've learned that Odafe Owe can get to the quarterback, but he can't finish the play. And that's kind of the conundrum for Adopt Away right now. Is that sometimes he's winning his matchup, you know? He's showing off that that athleticism, that speed, that burst, but he's not getting the quarterback to the ground. You know, Adopi always should have more than one sack so far this year, you know? Uh, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, an issue that was an issue throughout the entire training camp. If you go back and watch my videos, I'm saying what do the Ravens need? They need more outside linebackers. I've been saying this since training camp, and they haven't resolved the issue. They didn't resolve the issue until now when we're in the season. They signed a Brandon Copeland. They signed a Jason Pierre-Paul. Obviously, Justin Houston is here, but he's hurt, so, you know, whatever. Um, but it's an issue, and it's been an issue. It's not something that just popped up, but, it, you know, once Vince Beagle tore his Achilles, once Dalen Hayes was down, and I, it was an issue even before then, but after that especially. So they weren't proactive enough, in my in my opinion. Um, Patrick Queen has been up and down again. There's no consistency for Patrick Queen, especially in pass coverage, and um, even in even in run. So my my I'm asking, have you seen him on the pod with us? You know when we do these uh, Ravens previews, and we were watching the game, and he was mentioning how Patrick Queen on a run play consistently takes the wrong gap and ends up getting blocked and pushed out the play. It happens a lot. A whole lot. He uses that speed, but that's not, he's almost like a, uh, he's like, he's like a bullet aimer towards the wrong person. He doesn't know where he's going. Um, so what can the Ravens do about that? I don't know. You know, I, I said that Patrick Queen's best use for the Ravens is probably as a blitzer. And that's sad. He's not an outside linebacker. He's supposed to be an inside linebacker. He's supposed to be a guy that's supposed to be the next 
generation of the Ravens inside linebacker controlling the middle of the field. And as of right now, he's just not that. Um, so the Ravens have to find a way to use him where he's most expect most effective, excuse me. And um, yeah, that's just kind of less responsibility, kind of just running around at this point in time. Okay, secondary. Uh, Marcus Williams has been a standout signing. He's been a great signing so far for the Ravens. I don't expect, I don't expect that to change. He's still doing a lot of great things on the back end. The Ravens, oddly enough, will probably give up more big plays if Marcus Williams wasn't on this team. So that's been a slam dunk signing. Um, so that's that's been great. No no issues with Marcus Williams. Um, I would say that the coverage lapses have been disappointing, obviously. Um, the Ravens, this is when you kind of get to the Mike McDonald portion of it, where so far that we've learned is that McDonald is trying to do a lot of exotic things. And those things aren't being properly communicated to the players because they look confused at times. We saw it in the Dolphins game, saw it points in time in the Patriots game. They just don't seem to be on the same page. So maybe Mike McDonald needs to calm the system down a little bit, play a more simplified version of it, and maybe we can get some better coverage. I think the last two games, the, the back end has played better. I won't say it's been great. But this game versus Buffalo, last game versus Buffalo, Josh Allen didn't really have a good game throwing the football. Stephon Diggs had, what, four catches for 50, 60 yards, no touchdowns. So they played well on the back end as far as guarding this, this Bills offense. Now, what I will also say is the fact that McDonald, you got to get a little bit more aggressive. At the end of the game, when you started blitzing Josh Allen, we saw a noticeable difference in him. You, when, when, you, when you could get to the quarterback and move him off his spot, things change. Um, Josh Allen hurt us more with his legs scrambling, getting outside the pocket, and I believe he did with his arm. Okay. Um, so I think McDonald needs to have these cornerbacks be physical and challenge the receivers of the line of scrimmage. Think about it. Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, Marcus Peters, these are physical corners. These aren't laid back corners. Now, Marcus Peters can kind of do both because you know he wants to bait a quarterback and throw in the ball so he can get an interception. So he's probably the guy you can say, well, he probably does both, right? But Marlon Humphrey and Brandon Stevens, they want to be in receivers face jamming them at the line of scrimmage. That's that's what they're good at. Okay. And they're kind of playing away from that strength. Uh, I feel as though. Um too much soft coverage. The Ravens have an issue. I've said I've discussed this before. You can't have soft coverage and no pass rush. You can't have both. You have both, you you're you're asking for a disaster. You're asking for a quarterback to have all day and easy throws. And the Ravens have to find a balance where the soft coverage is not there, but the pass rush is. Or, you know, we're pressing the receivers, you know, that now you give some more time for that pass rush to get home. It has to work hand in hand with each other. Or you gotta send more people. Like I said, Patrick Crane has been really good at blitzing. If they if the Ravens want to consistently send five guys at the quarterback, I wouldn't be mad at that. I think that's my, that might be one of the best ways to generate pass rush for this team. So those are kind of my main thoughts about this team. This team is kind of um a disappointing two and two should be three and one should be four and zero, oh. but as somebody told me before, you are what your record says you are, right? And the Ravens are two and two, so they're a two and two football team. Um, they're going into the second quarter of the year, and we'll see what happens from there. But this team, uh, from the coaching staff on down to the last player, they need to get on the same page. A lot of undisciplined actions, a lot of confusion, um, just a lot of things that don't make a good football team. All right, and the Ravens right now are playing like a bank average football team. You can. A football game is 60 minutes. You know, no need to state the obvious, but it's 60 minutes. And right now, the Ravens play 30, 45. We had, they haven't played a full 60 minutes of football yet. So when that day comes, we'll see the true potential of this team. But until then, they're inconsistent at best. Um, so that's what I've learned about so far. I'm going to the Ravens for these first four games of the year. Drop it down uh, in the comments what you've learned about this team. And, uh, you know, I'd love to talk about it. Anyway, it's your boy Gabriel. There's another fan TV. I'm out.